Um, welcome to uh, OSB Local. Um, we will be talking about um, service brokers on your machine. Um, my name is Christian Brinker. Uh, I'm a software developer at Evola, and uh, I talk about a problem I faced a lot of times uh, during developing of software. Um, what, is, what is the problem we want to solve with this? Um, I'm a dev, and unfortunately, sometimes I'm also consulting somewhere, and in between, I, I want to de uh, develop something in the train, maybe uh, on the drive to the customer um, to test something. And unfortunately, I like Cloud Foundry and the Cloud Foundry experience, but at some times, you don't have internet access, you cannot access your Cloud Foundry, maybe, you may be remote. And, uh, or in a hotel room with a bad Wi-Fi, and you want to test something, and then you don't have a Cloud Foundry. Um, so several people came up with this idea. Hey, why don't you have a local Cloud Foundry on your local computer, which is uh, CF local, CF dev, different types of, of, uh, of ideas. Uh, by the one, you have uh, Docker containers. By the other hand, you have a fully fledged VM in the HyperKit running on your local machine, and you have all the things stuffed in there. So this is cool. Now you have a local Cloud Foundry. OK, CFDev is not that unconsuming of, of hardware resources in your laptop. So with this old uh, guy here, it's a little bit of, of frustrating sometimes. Um, but you have it. You can test things. Um, you can experiment, and so on. Um, so you have uh, this idea of a cloud um, is more or less equal to this local cloud thing. Um, but let's face another problem. I'm a dev and I have my local cloud and now um, my friend here comes and says, yeah, I have a cool idea. Let's make Mongo great again and use it in our project. <laughs> now get sad. Because why? Uh, my local cloud PCF, PCF dev, uh, CF dev may only have uh, MySQL in it, but no Mongo. So I have the problem to get a, a local MongoDB stuck in there somehow. So I'm really, oh. OK, where get a, get a MongoDB? Maybe I take a Docker container, spawn it, wire it somehow in the network of the CF dev, and uh, OK, or I have to, to look for some service broker and how, how to look how could I ship this thingy. And um, I'm really getting a little bit frustrated. So the cool idea is I want to have local cloud with my MongoDB service in the marketplace. That would be awesome. And that's uh, what makes me happy. So I can develop with it. Um, but not only with MongoDB, with every service broker around I, I want to start with. So, what is the idea? Um, I have my local P CF dev with Cloud Foundry, with Bosch Director, with MySQL. I didn't use CF local because most service brokers need a Bosch Director um, to deploy something, which we don't have in CF local. Um, then I want to have a service broker, somewhat thing, and I want to have a CLI plugin for my Cloud Foundry CLI to start that thing up, um, to make the service broker available in my CF dev in an easy way. Um, I don't have to think much about it. I only start working. And then I get my marketplace things there. So this is then OSB local as a concept. So what we, we have to achieve? Um, first of all, you have to have uh, some kind of vendoring mechanism for the service brokers. Why that? If you look at service brokers, they are all a little bit different. They all have to be a little bit started differently, um, how, to, how they work, how they will be shipped, how they will be deployed. Um, there are tiles, there are no tiles. They're deployed as VMs, as uh, cloud native application inside Cloud Foundry. It's all a little bit different if you look at different kinds of service brokers out there. So you have to have a standardized vendoring system for that, um, uh, the service brokers. Then you have to load them via CLI in CFDEV um, you, you, so that you can use them in the marketplace, create um, service instances, create service keys maybe to, for local testing outside of the CFDEV so you can 
use these um, service instances with your uh, IDE. So you can directly use them out, out from your, uh, in my IntelliJ, starting some, some of my, my stuff there locally and connect to that database also. So because I have it there, it's available, and then I can also push to CFDev my app. And the best thing with that is, if I want to restart my tests, I delete that service instance, create a new one, and start over. So if you look at Docker containers, you have that problem maybe that the Docker container may be stopped and started and maybe lose things, and here you have a proper lifecycle management through the service broker maybe. Um, we also uh, have the possibility to, to add amounts of saving uh, to the local disk so you can restart things and so on. So what are we doing? Um, with the CLI, I want to start over with uh, my, my service broker. So first of all, I have to have a vendor version of my service broker which has an, um, a direct um, uh, way to, to interact. So my, my CLI is uh, uh, needing some container for my service broker. I don't know what it is. It could be something different, but I have a an, 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 uh, tar file, a tarball, with a deploy and a remove script, which can be run on my machine locally to start up that service broker to deploy it somehow and to remove it. And I have some binaries in there, some push releases maybe, some config files maybe. I don't know because the deploy file, I want to start with my CLI is doing the job. And what is done, the deploy script is called from the CLI tool with giving me a host, a host name it wants to, uh, to register later on the service broker and the username and the password it wants to use for that. And the other thing is, later on, it wants to remove that service broker. That's it. So for example, with our MongoDB, um, I have a deploy script, my remove script. I have a jar file, which is, uh, is the service broker. Um, I have a Bosch release, which creates then a, Bosch, uh, a MongoDB uh, a VM inside of the HyperKit, maybe. Um, I have an... Uh, this, uh, I have some uh, config files I want to use for, for the deployment here, and uh, I deploy it with my service broker, admin, admin, and later on, I remove it that way. So, what are the benefits? What I, did I achieve against getting Docker? Um, first of all, I have the same deployment methods used like in uh, production, if I go later on to Cloud Foundry, my test experience on my local machine is the same. So I've uh, completely, parent, uh, completely the same thing, to the same way to, to uh, use the, the services. I don't have to uh, use CAPS on my local machine to get that Docker stuff uh, used for my CFDev. I uh, do not have to uh, tackle with uh, my networking on my local machine to the HyperKit. Um, I've uh, in, uh, where I have to tackle this, uh, these different things with my Docker. Um, the service brokers are maybe the same things I use also in the production environment because they only uh, use a small plan instead of big cluster, but it's, it's more or less could be the same service broker with a different plan which is used for local test, uh, which I use for testing also in the, in the test stage in my production environment. Um, I uh, can use the C, uh, have a C, uh, uh, CLI plugin for scripting. Um, in difference to that, um, I can you have uh, Docker files, which are mostly uh, I have to get from somewhere. So I get some from Docker Hub, some MongoDB uh, Docker file, and then I say, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, this doesn't work that way I thought so. Then this, and it's, the MongoDB is completely different configurator than in production. Um, then uh, maybe, but there is a Docker file for everything on the web, so it's a bit of a, a, a things for that. But if I look at day two operations with my databases, with the Docker file, I have to do all that things by hand. I have to delete my Docker file, I have to restart it, I have to look if, uh, uh, how it is uh, started up, do I have to introduce some um, uh, advanced configuration stuff so it's comparable to the things I do in production and um, where I have uh, here a, a database lifecycle management through the CFCLI because it's a service broker 
and I have a service key management, which I can also use to make it uh, differently available. Um, so let's see what it does, how it works. Okay, um, wrong package I see. So, um, where we are. Um, I have here my service broker uh, repository uh, folder, where I have my service broker in there. So I have here with the files I talked about, the deploy file, the MongoDB, uh, uh, jar and here I have my packaged uh, table, which I now want to upload to my cloud for Henri. So, if I go back, and I ah, see. Uh, CFOSB. I got it wrong. CFOSB. L. CFOSB. Add. So what I want to do is I want to. This is. One step, I forgot. Um, live demos. Um, MongoDB service broker. Ah. No, SSH. Create and serve. Forgot to start my um, my web server. Serve. Ah. Now we can do that here. Starting the web server for providing me the char file for me. Um, now, if we go back, if we go back, um, CF was B add. Now we retrieve from our local web server the char file. Um, Adding uh, adding the things here, the, the, the uh, creating a new space for my service brokers, um, uploading things, and log in. And now, marketplace. Nope. What did I do? Did I get it wrong? CDLS. Ah, I see it. that one but <sighs> it's 
excuse me. Now it go. Now we see it. Why don't you want to talk with me? Can you go back to the other time now? Yeah, I can do that. Ah, you're right. You're totally right. I knew. I did. What changes to Mongo? What changes here? What is what? We no. use Mongo. Ah. Mm -hmm. Now it. Ready to add. Yeah. It now it loads. Uh, Antars uploads. This is the power of pairing. Yeah, that's per per perfect. <laughs> Takes some seconds, I know, because it has to upload that to the HyperKit VM of the Bosch director and spawn a v VM in there and uh, installing MongoDB there. So, because it's a pre provisioned MongoDB service. Um, in the meantime, any questions until now? I know it's a little bit flecky with a, with a demo, hands-on demo. Um, what I created is um, I started a, a service um, where I tar the, the files I described beforehand into the tarball, um, upload, made it available with a, with a HTTP process. Um, then I said I wanted to add it as a new service to my, uh, to my CFDEV and um, make things available there. Um, in the meantime, we wait. Um, let's talk about where we want to go with that. Um, in the long run, we want to go to CF local because this is a little bit more, less aggressive in the resources of your local machine, but the drawback is you have no Bosch director with that which most service brokers need, so we have to circumvent that. Um, uh, we actually, you've seen, I uh, used a web server for that because the, the initial uh, CLI tool only used web addresses at the moment. I want to change that to, you can change between local file system and uh, using the, uh, uh, the web address. Um, you've seen the debug log is not that optimized. <laughs> um, so we need a bit more for there, and only at the moment, because of CFDEV and so on, we only uh, support macOS. With uh, CF Local, you have also other uh, distributions like win uh, Windows working, and um, the, so that, well, this would also improve the, the footprint on the local machine. Um, my, our documentation could be better, and we want to have a standalone mode without CFDEV or CF local, so you can also use this for providing your, your database locally without doing all of the other stuff. So you can only for your IDE spawn up the, the MongoDB, then remove it and so on, maybe with Eden, CLI and so on, so you can directly interact with that. Um, let's switch back. Oh. I know, no, let's. Have a look what's going on. Uh, Bosch. Hmm. Okay. Nope.
Ah, no, it's there. Most in between. Um, so if I now t want to test something, an app, So I have a script for spawning up a new space, adding some uh, information about that in a manifest, and then pushing uh, our uh, 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 music spring app to Cloud Foundry using a new service, in a new service instance I created. Um, I can easily um, do things like that. So. Where is it? Um, so if I have this thing here, no. So he says there is no test instance, so I create, so I go to marketplace, CF create it was B MongoDB XS called test. Ah, you're right. What is my typo day? It's already there. Push the app. Hmm? The app is not there. Doesn't put, did it, ah, was the wrong one? Ah, the cleanup, no, that I didn't want. Test, test. Somewhere there. Ah. No. <coughs> Too much presentations. There's no more, nothing more in my history. Um, then. I prefer to do test, test, test. Too. Test, Too test. It was space service. Service plan, service instance, app, app path. Okay. So it is. Test is age. Um, the created uh, was test, test, and music. Service. Did I miss something? Space? Yes. Ah. ah, yeah. So, one more test. Did I get it wrong? So you have two tests in the pack. No, I think I know what's the problem. Well, location. Oh, yeah, location. 
Um, Oaks bedroom. Nobody can accuse you for not being live. No. <laughs> this is not a fake demo, I guess. <laughs> should we take some questions as you as Yeah, you're we should do. Okay. Do we have some questions to that? And now it's a bit it looks a little bit flaky at the moment because of the the demo and I tried to script things and then forgot to to So provide. I'll ask do you plan you said you want to add it to CF dev? Or something like this, or I uh, know um, at, at the moment it works with CFDEV. So if you have, oh, you have, is, you yeah. have to have CFDEV uh, yeah. started at your local machine. I did that beforehand, and uh, I call, here you see the curve from from the music app. So if you look at uh, browser, localhost. No, I don't think that's the right one. Um, where is it? There it is. So this is the Spring Music app using the MongoDB mm -hmm. service, and uh, so what, what we were talking about, what I meant was um, we are using a, a CFDEV, so I've run CFDEV start during the keynote. Started up my CF dev and um, use this now here. And um, but the CF dev has a very big footprint on your machine. If you look at the, it takes about uh, more or less of this old laptop here uh, the full memory, which is not cool if you want to run a CI, uh, an IDE next to it. Um, for that CF local, which uses Docker containers, it's a little bit uh, less uh, strong from the footprint. And because it doesn't uh, utilize, uh, it makes about the user experience, but not about the creating a complete uh, cloud foundry next to it. It would be much better for the for the users, for the developers. So we want to go there, but um, CF local because it's not cloud foundry deployment doesn't have a Bosch directory, which most of the um, the service brokers need. So um, what we have to do then is deploy a, a Bosch directory for the CF local. Uh, um, to, to work with it, and by that we have to, to look um, when start making the, CA, uh, the CFOs be at that he looks if, is there a CF dev or CF local, and then starting the, the, the things for it. So this is uh, work to do, um, so you can uh, use less footprint, and also you can, uh, uh, we have to f uh, come up with a, with a trick if there's nothing of both, so you can use it in standalone mode. Coming from someone that is running um, Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes, <clears throat> the missing Bosch directory in CF Local is kind of a feature for us because so many things currently in Cloud Foundry rely on Bosch being there. Mm -hmm. um, and, I'm, well, not even sure if this, how this is going to be solved in the future. Um, the, the problem is most of the uh, service brokers at the moment do. So if you want to use arbitrary uh, service brokers with that, you have to have a Bosch director for them prepared so they can utilize that. Um, you're right, if you want to get al uh, along without a Bosch director in the long run, um, you want to use Kubernetes for your data services, you want to, do not want to have that, so um, we may add some uh, information in the configuration of the service broker uh, tarball to, to show I need a Bosch director, I don't need it. So you can uh, may deploy then with less footprint. This could be possible solution. Maybe one very technical one, you were always using SH, so the born shell when you ran your scripts. Uh, is this explicitly um, so to avoid people running into bashes and things like that, or uh, the install and deploy? Um, the, the, SH, uh, the, the deploy SH is, uh, at the moment, it was only uh, 
it is a, a little bit of, of enforced, but I'm not sure if that is a good thing. It's in the early stage of the project, so um, it was for the, for the easy access, because as a, it, an SH is easy to write. Um, for the long run, we have to come up with a better trick for that. Yeah, I feel like a little CLI. Would yeah. Be, yeah. Okay, last question. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't work with some of the technologies you showed in quite a while, but the last time I used them, it was very, very flaky on the local machine. The CFDF, uh, yeah, for CFDF sure. as well as Bosch Light and everything. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. there are quite a few differences between DEF and production once you use them because you have completely different setup locally than in production. So would you say that this small gain of DEF broad parity you gain by the setup is really worth the effort compared to running those services in Docker and just bind them to Docker? Um, the problem with the, with the Docker thing is um, you have uh, with you, when using service broker you have a distinct configuration of your service. So it's not about the, the it's a cluster or not a cluster um, for most services, but also which are the predefined um, uh, type uh, um, uh, uh, character sets and so on in the, in the configuration to have uh, how it uh, preparations for the wrapper set configuration and so on for, for bigger clusters. You have also in the, in the smaller uh, dev versions of, of these service brokers often and the if you look at the, the Docker versions you find on Docker Hub, for example, they're completely different. So if you have a service broker um, provider which has also a Docker file, which is, would be ex completely uh, same configured, that would be, you could easily use that Docker file, but you, often you don't have that. So you want to have a, a, a service broker configuration like that on your local machine. Just a very last question. I assume this only works with stateless service brokers, right? Once they need any backing services, this might get a little chicken egg problem. Um, actually, this service broker has a backend. Which is Mongor. Um, yeah, um, which is uh, sp sp spanning up an, uh, uh, on its own virtual machine, which it, it is deployed to. Uh, he's, uh, he's running on a virtual machine uh, deployed by the Bosch director. If you uh, uh, look here. Um, Mm. Um, if you look down there, you have a, a, a service MongoDB VM, which is uh, having the, the service broker, and there he has a local file system. And also, there's running a, a local MongoDB for the backend for, of that thing, so he doesn't have to have more than one release. Thank you, Christian.